Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to Philippine CPD Online. I will be your lecturer for the remainder of this course. Follow me as we explore and learn how to manage hypertension in the elderly. By the end of this lecture, you, the participant, must be able to know the following. 1. Why hypertension is more prevalent in the elderly. 2. How to diagnose and classify hypertensives, especially in the elderly. 3. Importance of identifying secondary causes of hypertension in the elderly, which can be treated. 4. Why end organ effects of hypertension are more devastating on the elderly. 5. Know the principles of managing hypertension, especially in the elderly. 6. Know the importance of lifestyle changes in the management of hypertension in the elderly. 7. Know the principles of pharmacological therapy in the elderly. 8. Understand special geriatric principles that need to be considered always in treating elderly patients. And lastly, understand that the very elderly is different from the general patient population and the importance of individualized management. Now, hypertension affects a quarter of the world's population and its prevalence increases with advancing age. It affects as much as half of all people between the ages of 60 to 69 years old and over 70% of those over 70 years old. Hypertension is an important modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular and kidney diseases. Elevation of blood pressure beyond 115 over 75 millimeters mercury is correlated with increased risk for death. The risk of dying doubles for every 20 over 10 millimeters mercury increase in blood pressure. As people age, the chances of developing hypertension increases. Data from the Framingham Heart Study shows that the lifetime risk of individuals who are free from hypertension at age 55 to 65 is over 90%. That means over 90% of individuals between 55 to 65 who are normotensive would eventually develop hypertension. After the age of 50, an increase in systolic blood pressure is more important than an increase in diastolic blood pressure in predicting an adverse outcome. This is attributed to the age-related increase in systolic blood pressure and decrease in diastolic blood pressure after the age of 60. Majority of elderly individuals have isolated systolic hypertension and increased pulse pressure. These factors correlate positively with all cause and cardiovascular-related cause of death. This is primarily caused by increased arterial stiffness and lower diastolic blood pressure in older adults. This phenomenon of increased systolic blood pressure and decreased diastolic blood pressure is due to changes that occurs in the elastic arteries of the elderly. They dilate and stiffen. This arterial stiffening is due to structural changes in the arterial media. These changes include the following. 1. Declining smooth muscle cell numbers. 2. Increased collagen content in vessel walls. 3. Calcium deposition. and 4. Disruption of elastic fibers. These structural changes are secondary to structural fatigue caused by the 10% dilation that occurs on the proximal arteries with every beat of the heart. Over the years, the increased stress on the vascular walls produces these vascular changes. This results in increased stiffness, decreased capacitance, and loss of recoil. The increased stiffness, especially in the large elastic arteries, increases systolic blood pressure, while the loss of recoil results in decreased diastolic pressure. These changes result in an increase in the pulse wave velocity, which is correlated 
with increased mortality. The reflected pressure waves summate with the forward pressure waves in the ascending aorta to increase the central systolic blood pressure. This exposes the coronary and cerebral arteries to high pressure. This process also increases left ventricular wall stress and myocardial oxygen requirements, both of which worsens ischemia, a condition which is often present in the elderly patient. Additionally, the reflected blood flow waves subtract from the forward blood flow waves, in other words, the stroke volume, to reduce cardiac output. This condition ultimately results in decreased organ blood flow. Decreased organ blood flow is particularly deleterious for the coronary, cerebral, and renal circulation. Aside from structural changes, Arterial stiffness is also induced by endothelium-derived vasoactive mediators like endothelin-1 and decreased by availability of nitric oxide. One subgroup of patients, elderly women, requires closer focus. The prevalence of hypertension is less in women below 45 years old than in men. They become equal in between the age of 45 to 64. However, the prevalence is much higher in women over the age of 65. Not only is prevalence increased in elderly women, blood pressure control is much more difficult to achieve. Endothelial dysfunction, increased arterial stiffness, obesity, genetic factors, elevated total cholesterol, and low high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels have been implicated in menopause-related blood pressure elevation rather than ovarian failure per se. This ends our introduction. See you on the next one when we discuss how to diagnose and classify elderly hypertensives.